Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. We've talked before about modern technology and the constant surveillance we're under. And I've talked about license plate readers. And the idea is that they can put a thing in an intersection and it just sits there and records license plates as they go by. And it just does it for every single vehicle that it can read. And it can store all the information. And then it can also throw up flags if a car with a stolen plate goes by. And so a lot of people think that it's kind of intrusive to have that stuff happening in our society. But once in a while, some good news happens. And we have a story here where the license plate reader caught some information that actually saved a guy in a murder case. So Neil sent it. Thanks a lot. Jordan Laird wrote this for the uh, Columbus Dispatch. Columbus murder case dismissed in light of license plate reader camera evidence. Murder charge filed against a Pickaway County man in a 2021 Columbus murder was dismissed Tuesday at the request of the Franklin County Prosecutor's Office in light of evidence from a license plate reading camera. The judge in the Franklin County Common Pleas Court dismissed the case against the man who's 36 years old from Kingston. He had been indicted on murder and robbery charges related to an incident uh, involving a former Columbus lawyer who was um, killed in October in a parking lot behind his home where his law practice was based in uh, South Linden. He died later, uh, less than two hours after the shooting. Prosecutors in the case filed documents to the court now saying the case should be dismissed. Prosecutors are no longer willing to pursue the case due to concerns about a lack of evidence. But there's also something else. The man's cell phone, that is the defendant, his cell phone was found at the scene of the shooting. And security video captured a man dropping the cell phone as he ran from the scene. So people thought, well, it's this man's cell phone that would certainly indicate there's a high likelihood it was him. And investigators used cell phone tower information to track the cell phone to a location a block from the crime scene within a half hour of the shooting. So it seems like that's really good evidence, right? The man's attorney told the newspaper that his client's phone was stolen and they had evidence to prove that. But there's even more. The lawyer's office pointed out that footage from a license plate reading camera elsewhere in Columbus placed his client's car in a different location from his phone. So his car is over here, his phone is over here. And they're saying, well, we found the phone at the scene, and the attorney's going, no, the guy's phone was stolen, and we know where he was because he was in his car. The camera only captured the car but did not record the driver's face, but... The attorney says it was in discovery. Nobody paid any attention to it until we dug it out and put two and two together. I'm grateful for the assistance of my diligent and committed staff, which helped us uncover the key to my client's freedom, which was right in front of our noses all along. He said he's grateful also to the prosecutor for taking the high road and dismissing the case once the license plate reading camera information was presented to them. Uh, the man had been arrested in November and was released from jail more than five months later in late April after the evidence was brought to light and the judge waived his bond. Columbus police could not immediately comment on the development as of uh, Tuesday, including whether or not they're following up on other leads. So some people, I know what you're going to say, are going to say, Steve, how do we know that the car wasn't stolen and the phone was in his hands? Or how do we know someone else wasn't driving the car and he really did drop the phone? But it sounds like what they have here is sketchy evidence at both ends. Yes, they found his phone at the scene and they got a video of someone running away, but they didn't say they had video of him running away. And so if you've got the phone there, that's something. But we've got his car over here. Well, that's something also. And the question is, which is more likely him? And... You might still say, Steve, I'm still willing, if I was in the jury, to say those are like equal. Well, what else you got? Because remember, you got to convict somebody beyond a reasonable doubt. What do they have beyond a reasonable doubt other than, well, we found his phone at the scene dropped by somebody running away. The defense goes, we've got the license plate reader camera information over here. Okay, so if nothing else, they're equal.
right? And you got to get something beyond a reasonable doubt. The guy did spend a few months in jail, you know. So uh, it's an interesting case. But that's what's crazy about the surveillance that we're under. And you look at something like, remember the incident at the Boston Marathon a few years ago? Um, There were thousands of people within that area right there at the finish line in Boston. Thousands of people. And it took them a couple days. But by going through all of the camera footage they had near the finish line, they eventually identified the guys that they were looking for. And I recently saw a documentary about that, and and I was reminded of the timeline of when the race was, when the incident occurred, when they actually had the photographs identified, these are the guys we're looking for, and then so on. And the thing is that there were simply security cameras at all these different locations up and down that street. And the police would just go in and say, hey, look, we need help. We need help. Do you have the camera footage from that time? And nowadays, with technology being what it is, the cameras are smaller. They're higher definition. A lot of the information is being recorded and put like the cloud and so on or, or being stored someplace digitally. And, uh, you know, I, someone comes up and rings your doorbell. If you've got a ring camera, you've got a video of that event. And you can see them as they approach and see them as they press the button. And, you know, and, and that type of stuff, you know, I remember years and years and years ago when some places installed the first cameras. <laughs> Big old thing looks like a camera. And it's recording someplace on, you know, VHS tapes. And, uh, yeah, they would get something, but it'd be grainy from a distance, you know. Uh, and think back on how many times we saw video footage of a crime occurring we are going, yeah, I can see what's happening, but I can't make out their faces or anything else about it, you know. So this is kind of remarkable if you think about it because there's a device sitting there and it's recording license plates. And if you were sitting there trying to record license plates, you know, the different locations on the vehicle, some are dirty, some are from different states, you know, and, and of course a machine can work, you know, much, much faster than a human being. So it is remarkable and I agree that for the most part, I don't like these things either. I don't like the idea that they're just dumbly gathering information. They're just gobbling up information. They're just just everything. And the idea that if you drive through a particular intersection, it gets recorded, makes me want to drive around the block. It does. It does. Uh, But is it illegal? You know, and and most of these things are, are pretty obvious. I know that in the states that have got the red light cameras. And by the way, Michigan is now thinking about putting in some traffic cameras near construction sites. And I'm worried about that also because as I know and as you know, the moment they get their toe in the door, they've got these things at construction sites. We're going to protect the workers. They're next going to say, oh, well, we can put them near schools. Oh, we can put them in intersections. Wait, wait, what? (laughs) I thought we were protecting the workers. But it, it worries me about that type of how that, creeps like that and it makes it worse and worse it, it expands but i know that in many states they'll have a sign saying you know this intersection red light cameras you know and i've i've never gotten one of those tickets in my life but i've actually seen the flash go off to take the photograph <laughs> if you know what i'm talking about you're driving along and you're near an intersection like an awesome poof and and it it's like a lightning strike that hits something in your field of vision, like right in front of you. That's how bright it is for a split second. It's scary. So that's another reason I don't like those cameras. But the good news here is this guy has an alibi and he's got a government-operated camera that caught his car, his license plate, far away from the scene where he was accused of committing a crime. So Jordan Laird wrote that for the Columbus Dispatch. Neil sent it. Thanks a lot. Columbus murder case dismissed in light of license plate reader camera evidence. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. I got over my addiction to chocolate, marshmallows, and nuts. I won't lie, it was a rocky road.